so we are going to stop all these things the three microservices we have and we're going to create a Eureka server I'm going to start up a Eureka server where do I go to download a Eureka server do I have to download a Eureka server is there such a thing as a Eureka server turns out there isn't you, you, you download Tomcat, you don't download a Eureka server. Surprisingly, the way to create a Eureka server is to actually create a Spring Boot application. It's very counterintuitive, but that's how you do it. So how do you create a Spring Boot application? You go to Spring Initializer. So that's how you create a Eureka server as well, all right? So let me refresh this so that we are starting from a clean slate here. So I'm going to do io.javabrains, and then let me call this discovery-server. OK. Now if I do download, there's going to be just another Spring Boot application. But what makes it a Eureka server is if I add the dependency called Eureka server. You notice there was another dependency here called Eureka Discovery. That's the client. So Spring Boot comes with two dependencies. Whatever application you want as that Eureka server, you use the Eureka server dependency. Whatever application you want to do the discovering or to publish and tell the Eureka server I'm here, you use the Eureka client dependency. So there are two dependencies. So I'm going to download this and start up a discovery server And this is going to have the Eureka server dependency. And for the clients, I just I add the dependency for Eureka client, and then it's automatically going to, it's going to get the Eureka client libraries in the class path. Right? That's how that works. So this is the discovery server here. I'm going to copy this. I well, guess what, it's already here. So I'm gonna paste this here. All right, so now I have a new Spring Boot project, which is a Eureka server. So I'm gonna open this in a new window. this is a maven project and this is going to download all the dependencies and all that stuff and this is just another spring boot project but notice this one thing here this annotation at the top it says at enable eureka server that's an annotation which tells spring boot that this is a eureka server and then if you open the pom.xml This is the dependency that you need, all right? So these dependencies are not usually a part of the download, OK? I'm pretty sure this thing isn't a part of the download either. You might probably have to add that uh, once you download it. This is probably not something that the downloaded project comes with. So if I don't remember, try that out. If you don't see that, just add the at enable Eureka server to the main application, and that's what makes this a Eureka server. Now, this is what you get when you download. But what happens is when you run this, you're going to get a bunch of JAXP errors. You're going to get those errors if your Java version is Java 11. My Java version is Java 11 here. And when you run this by default, you're going to get JAXP errors. So that's the reason why I added these JAXP libraries. Can you guess why those errors show up when I'm using Java 11? JAXP was deprecated from the JDK from Java 9 onwards. When they went the whole modular route, uh, Java X XML was by default a part of the JDK, Java 8 and before. 
but from Java 9 onwards, or probably Java 10 onwards, they deprecated it. It's not a part of the JDK anymore. So if you want to use JAXP, you want to do Java XML uh, functionality, you have to add JAXP consciously. It's not a part of the JDK. So these people haven't added it in the palm.xml. So if you run a Eureka server without these dependencies on Java 11, you're going to get JAXP errors. So you need to add these things. We've already gone ahead and added those. So you should not get those errors. Now what's left is to run this main method. Set up the SDK and click run. It's going to start up like any Spring Boot application, but here you see it says started Eureka server. All right. I'm going to go to my browser and access it at that port. Let's see what the port is. It's 2761. You notice I didn't configure the port. By default, Eureka server runs on port number 8761. Sorry, it's not 27861. I'm going to access localhost. 8761, and here is Spring Eureka. There's actually a UI that Spring Eureka comes with by default. It says what the system status is, the current time, how long it's been up. We've just started it, so it hasn't been up in a while. And then here there's this section which says instances that are currently registered with Eureka. This is the phone book, right? There are no instances currently registered with Eureka. Why? We have microservices, but they don't have Eureka client. We have to add Eureka client, and only then those microservices have the functionality to set to tell Eureka server that they exist. All right, and then you have a bunch of uh, general information, metrics, and all that stuff. So this is Eureka server. Not only is this providing a UI, it also has functionality to supply microservice location information, URL information, if somebody were to ask it. Right now, nobody's asking for it. What we're going to do is we're going to have that, have them ask it. So before we go on to the other stuff, there's one more thing I want to say. When you start Eureka server by default, even with all these minor changes, you're going to get a bunch of errors in the console. To fix, the er fix those errors, you're going to have to add a couple of properties that I've added over here. I see, yes, you have server.port is 8761, but this is optional. You don't have to do this by default. Eureka server port is 8761. These are two properties you add to Eureka server so that Eureka does not register with itself. So here's the thing. Every Eureka server is also a Eureka client. Okay? It when it register when it runs, not only does it provide a registry, it also tries to register with other Eureka servers because guess what? Not only can you have multiple instances of microservices, you can have multiple instances of Eureka servers. And then they can register with each other so that even if one server were to fail, another server can still provide um, you know, that d directory service. So since I have just one service here, I add these two properties to tell Eureka server to stop acting like a client. I'm basically saying, you're the only server here. You're the boss. Don't try to find another Eureka server. So it's saying, register with Eureka is false. And then don't fetch registry as well, because you are the only person who has the registry. Right, so you add these two properties to prevent a bunch of errors from showing up in the console. But even if you don't add those properties, it's perfectly fine. It'll still work. You get some errors, but it'll still work.